Hello guys, hello. It's Dr. T speaking uh, from Clinical Medicine with Dr. T. Welcome to this episode. And yes, for those who are watching for the first time, welcome to the channel. Um, this channel, guys, is just to help to do my bit, to help where I can. Yes, I've got a passion to teach or a passion of teaching. Um, so that's the main reason why I have this channel. Uh, and I think it's a great plus, flat platform to teach. Um, since last year, when I started to, to do my uh, doing my internship, I've been uh, meeting different students in uh, in the ward during the rotations that I did last year, and the, some of them have been asking me to start a, a channel. But I have been reluctant the whole of last year. But then this year I decided this year I decided to give in. So that's the main reason. Okay, so guys, I wanted to talk about uh, acute abdomen slash appendicitis. Acute abdomen appendi appendicitis. Okay, a patient is good. I, you know, guys, acute acute abdomen is like a very very big topic. Very very big topic. So I think it would be more, it will make more sense if we tackle acute abdomen like this. Uh, we're gonna acute, we're gonna, we're gonna, in this series of acute abdomen, we're gonna look at, uh, at acute abdomen um, at an angle of a specific uh, uh, condition like appendix. So we can, we're gonna also do acute abdomen, pancreatitis, acute abdomen, uh, peptic ulcer disease like that like that acute abdomen cholangitis like that like that so because doing acute abdomen j is gonna it's, it's a very big topic and i'm i'm gonna cover the most common in the most um the most common in the most asked um conditions during exams so appendicitis so let's just define acute abdomen acute abdomen by definition is abdominal pain that has been there for less than a week Meaning, if it's more than a week, it's no longer acute abdomen, and that, and that acute abdomen, and that pain that the patient has, that abdominal pain must be a pain that the patient has never presented uh, with before, and it must, it must, uh, it must be a pain that has not been investigated or treated before, so that's acute abdomen. So. Let's talk about appendicitis in this case. So a patient with acute abdomen will come in with pain, obviously. They will come in with abdominal pain. Uh, they might have nausea and vomiting and all that. So it's very hard to just look at acute abdomen. All we know about acute, acute abdomen is that it's a sudden pain. That is very painful. That's need, that needs in, uh, uh, emergency or urgent attention. That's an acute abdomen. So let's talk about append appendicitis. So to understand appendicitis, we need to understand a bit about the anatomy. So that's our appendix, that's our ascending colon, and that's our ilium. So first of all, an appendix is a tubular structure that is found at this location which is just before the start of the, the ilium, just at the second. So it's a tubular structure like that. So this tubular structure, once something happens, whatever that happens, but you end up having a blockage here, and there have been different theories about what actually initiates appendicitis, what actually causes the block. Everyone believes that there's a block that comes, something blocks the, the, the opening of the lumen. And uh, the most accepted theory is that it's a fecal lith. Fecal lith. Lith means stone, fecal means feces. So, but when you look at, so it, it's gonna initiate, it's the one that initiates everything. Everything that happens after this is because of this blockage. But other things that can block this are your worms. Your worms can also block this. 
uh, your your seeds undigested seeds or pits can do that also tumor be it malignant or benign they can dislodge there like a tumor cells small tumor cells they can go there so what happens is you have got a blockage now and you've got a blockage but you've got a continuous production of mucinous fluid there that fluid will not be able to, to go out and it's gonna be static so you develop stasis there and as you develop stasis whatever that is uh, is static in the body just invites bacterial proliferation so you get this and then you get stasis then the next thing you get bacterial proliferation once you get bacterial proliferation it means now you've got an infective process going on infective process and this thing swells it swells once it swells remember it has got a blood supply by the penicillin artery so the artery there because of the swelling the, the the artery because of the swelling you develop thrombosis because once it swells the circulation now becomes affected the movement of blood or the flow of blood becomes affected you develop thrombosis so you get thrombosis Once you get thrombosis, it means now you've got ischemia. And once you get ischemia, you run a chance of having necrosis. And once you've got necrosis, perforation is the next thing. Perforation. So, and then by the time you get to to ischemia necrosis, your patient is already symptomatic. When they perforate, it's worse. They are very, 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 very sick. Um, so these are the events that uh, happen then with appendix. So what will be the presentation? Your patient is gonna come in with <clears throat> acute abdominal pain, anorexia, nausea plus minus vomiting they might come in with diarrhea as well um, they will come in with fever and also the presentation also will also depend whether the patient is, is ruptured or not a patient that is ruptured is very sick it's very very sick they might even come in septic shock those ones which means you might need to resus them before you can do any other thing when they come in with the uh, in septic shock with a perforated uh, appendix. A, an appendix that, while we are still here, once you get a perforation, that's a complex appendix. And a simple appendix is when you still have this. That's a simple appendix. Simple appendix. Once you get a perforation, you get a mess, you get an abscess, that's a complex or a complicated appendix. But if you don't have those, then it's just a simple. It becomes important in management uh, to make that differentiation. So an appendix can either be simple or complicated, or it can be simple or um, complex. So that this is how your patient will. Let's say let's talk about a patient that is disabled. You so they come in with this history. Once they come in with this history, we do an examination. The most important, yes, you're going to look at your vital signs and all those things to determine whether they have perforated or not. Because the patient that has perforated. The, and it's not they might be in septic shock so they will have hypotension tachycardia that side of sort of a thing and appendix this is when it kills once you get uh once it ruptures and then the patient delays going to theater for whatever reason and then they develop a cells a systemic inflammatory response syndrome then that's when now you end up having kidneys being involved, uh, they having a heart being involved. They become uh, they get into cardiogenic uh, to cardiogenic shock. They 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 get renal impairment. They get other involved other organs being involved. So appendix is not as as what's the word is not as. It can be very cruel. It can be very bad. Things can go, can go very, very bad, especially once you get here. 
and you don't want to get there because of this. Um, and a patient that has got a ruptured appendix will stay longer in hospital than a patient who came in with just a simple appendix. So you don't want to delay them. Okay. So the most important examination after, you, after your vital signs, checking your vital signs, everything, is your abdominal examination. You want to check if it's distended. Sometimes you can look at an appendix patient and most of the times when you see them clinically they will be in a position that is um, they will flex their hips because when you flex your hips you are putting uh, you are relieving the the peritoneum and the muscles from being stretched so when you when you when you are stretched like that you are pulling a peritoneum that is got um because the peritoneal peritoneum at that point is also involved. So for them, so for them to flex their hip is a way of relieving of relieving um alleviating the pain. So most of the time, some of them will come in walking like this. You know, when I see a 14-year-old come in, come in casual and walking like that, my number one suspicion is appendix. Because they will be walking like that. Or if you find you find them already in the bed, they will still be flexed like that. They will be um they will have they will be in hip flexion it's just um a way of uh, relieving the pain so you want to check if it's descended you want to check if um where is the tenderness okay when they come in they might tell you not all the time they might tell you that okay this pain started perambilically and now i'm feeling it on the right iliac fossa on the right side some of them will tell you that story. Some of them will not, won't even tell you because they don't even remember if something like that happened. Yeah. So a patient that doesn't have, that doesn't present, doesn't tell you about perambilical pain that shifted to the right leg fossa does not say that they don't, they might, they've got, they might not have appendix they, or they don't have appendix. So, yeah. So you want to check if the abdomen is soft or if it's tense and where is the pain? If the pain is localized on the right side on the right iliac fossa okay but the most most important thing is are they peritonitic like are, are they having a rebound tenderness are they having guarding as you examine because rebound tenderness remember you do you know the way you do uh, um abdominal palpation you first go soft away from the area where the patient says the pain is you just go you do a soft palpation and then once you do a deep palpation once you do a deep palpation and then you release very fast your patient is going to scream that's a rebound tenderness that's how you elicit rebound tenderness rebound tenderness is a sign that the peritoneum is involved and um, if the patient has got pain that's localized to the right iliac fossa chances of that patient having perforated are very low they are very low it's not saying no but they are very low but if the abdomen is painful everywhere wherever you touch there's rebound tenderness everywhere it's okay to have rebound tenderness on the right iliac fossa as long as you don't have it on the other parts of the abdomen but if you have it everywhere then chances are that patient is peritonitic and they've ruptured their appendix and uh, yeah so there are other signs of appendix that personally i feel is just academic it's not really to help the patient i have diagnosed a, a number of patients with appendix without doing any of those signs what is important is that you look at these things you decide where is your patient and then appendix is a very clinical diagnosis if it's really real appendix it's very clinical not unless there's something else that might also be causing the patient's symptoms. So after doing all of that, you will do your blood. Remember, the signs that I was talking about, ne? there's quite a number of them. There's the obturator sign, there's the roasting sign, um, which I don't really, really, um, I know about them, but I don't really do them whenever I see a patient. The roasting sign, it's a simpler one. Basically, for a patient that has got, um, yeah, it's, it's good to know them for marks. But clinically, they're not really relevant. So a Robson sign, Robson sign, it's a patient, the patient over here says got right iliac fossa pathology, which is the appendix in this case. Once you, you palpate this side, they, 
feel pain on the on on the side on the right hand on the right iliac fossa. You palpate on the right on the left iliac fossa, but they feel pain on the on the right iliac fossa, even with without you touching them on the right iliac fossa. That's a rousing sign. Then you can look at other the obturator and all these other things. So your blood that you want to do for this patient is your UNE and your a, a, your your FBC. FBC studies have shown that if you've got a patient that has got symptoms that look like appendix but they've got normal white cell count then it's not appendix simple as that it's not appendix so but most of the times the patients that i have seen that have got appendix that have labeled them as having appendicitis their white cells always come back uh, high and also the white cell count also tells you about potential rupture the higher it is the likely that it will rupture so I can't remember the, the, the exact um, numbers that they use. If it's like up to this, it's an unruptured, whatever. But I know the higher it is, the likely that it will rupture anytime. So, yeah. And why do we do the UNEs? We do UNEs because of we're not doing them to help us to diagnose appendicitis. But should this patient go to theatre? The anesthetist wants to know about the renal function because if you've got a patient who has got other comorbidities and then they have um, renal impairment they would want to avoid drugs that are being excreted by the renal system so they would want because there are other drugs that can also be excreted by the liver or metabolized and said by the liver so they would want to know about that and try and plan for these patients um, anesth anesthesia what drugs they would use but it's not to diagnose uh, appendicitis so these are the drugs that these are the main um, uh, what you call the main plus that we do and FBC in other places it was this thing medicine has got a lot to do where are you doing it and who is your senior and all of that you know in other centers um, like where I trained for appendicitis patients, they only used to do HP. I mean, sorry, they only used to do a white cell count only and nothing else. If a patient doesn't have comorbidities that uh, we might think they might have anemia or whatever, they used not to do an FPC. They would just do a white cell count. But where I'm working, we always do an FPC. So, yeah. Um, so, you are now taking a patient to theater. A, a patient that has not perforated is needs to go to theater but it's not like uh, it must be now especially if you've got other patients that have perforated patients that have perforated they should take priority they should go to to theater first the uh, <laughs> appendicitis is very 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 common guys i remember when i was still doing surgery i think per call would have about four or five cases of appendicitis I remember there was a time we had about 12 patients that were waiting for for operation they all had appendicitis so that's how common this thing is okay so how do you manage appendicitis yes you're gonna give them the fluids and uh, remember the reason why you give them fluids they might be behind in terms of their fluids because they've not been eating or drinking for some time so you want to give them fluids and also it would help you if you they've got a bit of high blood pressure for whatever reasons but if a patient for an unstable patient obviously you'd give fluids to, as, as a form of a resuscitation but a patient who's just stable you still give them fluids because of that um um thing of that reason so um wait when you work in centers whereby the patients are not operated where you work for instance you are working at a district hospital and in that district or at the clinic and in that district hospital they don't do um operation you need to refer this patient the problem now is that the issue of um of antibiotics and analgesia when you see this kind of patient let's say you see them at the clinic are you gonna give analgesia it's a tricky and a very difficult question to answer because if I'm working at a district hospital and I, re I need to refer my patient to a tertiary institution, which is like maybe three hours or four or two hours away, am I going to not give these patients analgesia so that when they get there, 
the doctor who sees them, the surgeon can still elicit the the features that I I I, I picked up, like your rebound tenderness, regular fossa tenderness, all those things. Am I gonna withheld or withhold or not give this patient analgesia so that my colleague on the other side can be able to pick up the signs that I picked up? It's very difficult. Or am I gonna give them and still because it's true that if you give them strong uh, painkillers, when they get to a tissue institution, they might not have um, the, the pain symptoms that, um, that they came in with when they, were see, when they went to see you. It's a very difficult thing. And uh, I don't think there's a straight answer to it. I don't, th I don't think there is. But I think personally, because remember, even if you can give them an analgesia now, when that analgesia has uh, weighing off, the symptoms are, are, are going to come back. But they might come back when the guy, other guy that side has already discharged the patient. Or whatever, whatever. It, it's, it's a difficult thing um, to decide about. And uh, yeah. So the, let's talk about the management. So I'll leave that, guys, to decide for yourself and also with your seniors. And what are they saying? Because it's, it's a gray area. So how do we manage appendicitis? There is medical management, medical management, and then there is surgical. Maybe some of you are looking at me and saying, medical, yes, there is medical management for appendicitis, but there's a criteria that the patient must meet. For instance, it doesn't make sense to medically manage appendicitis on a patient that has ruptured, perforated so they don't meet the criteria and also you look at the white cell count how high is it because if it's very high then that patient is going to perforate anytime so it, there's no point medically manage uh, uh, to medically manage them when you medically so there's a criteria so the patients that so the drugs that you use the you use augmenting and there's a study that was done on this and they picked up that there are patients that would come in with a simple appendix, they get uh, antibiotic for seven days, and then they are followed up. Some of them were followed up up, and, up until two years, and they never had, it never, re um, um, it never re re recurred. So they never got symptoms again, so their appendix was fine. For two years, they did a follow-up, so this does work, <clears throat> medical management. Surgical can either be open or laparoscopic. Open or laparoscopic. Again, a patient that is ruptured needs to be opened up. Or a patient that is perforated needs to be opened up. But a patient, if you for some whatever reasons, you've got a patient that is not perforated, there's not ruptured, and you want to take them to theater, you can do a laparoscopic uh, procedure on them. So that's your appendix. Um, normally these patients are kept in theater these ones will always the ruptured ones will always stay longer in hospital and this patient when things really go bad they might even end up in ICU and also um, yeah yeah so the, I think that's that with appendicitis um, so I hope you guys will comment and um, and tell me where I what what I forgot or whatever comment that you guys might have. But I think that's it for appendicitis. Once again, thank you for watching, and uh, keep subscribing, liking, and sharing the channel. When we do that, we will grow. Thank you, thank you, and thank you.